What's going on YouTube? It's been a while. It's been quite a while since I've posted. Uh, just wanted to take a hiatus, wanted to kind of just take a break and get back to baseline ground zero. Uh, and obviously, if you look at the title already of this video, we're going to be looking at Perfumes the Marley, Byerly. I think my review will only be the second review ever done on YouTube, acknowledged by another uh, even much better known uh, fraghead than myself. Um, Sebastian of Looking, Feeling, Great Sense, or I think that's the name of the show. But anyways, check out Sebastian's on YouTube if you if you can. Great guy, awesome channel. Uh, does a lot of niche and premium products. Primarily does a lot of designer stuff, but it tends to be a little bit higher in designer. Anyways, um, before I go on with my Perfumes the Marley Byerly review, uh, hi, hi, Rich. Thanks for, for uh, joining me today on my live cast. I did definitely want to reiterate, uh, as I'm sure you all know by now, and I did not want to do a... I, for some strange reason, I didn't want to do an episode tribute video. Um, I've done that before, and let me be very crystal clear. I am not in any way, shape, fashion, or form uh, indemnifying. I'm not. I'm not throwing judgment. I'm not casting shade on any other reviewer that was doing the tribute from a good, from a really good place. To I'll just say it to uh, Dan, my Mickers Mish, who passed away sadly on November the fourth, uh, just about two weeks ago. Uh, is that is that right? Four. Yeah, about about two weeks and change. Um, okay. Um, in other words, I myself have done a video tribute video uh, about a year ago um, to Chris, uh, who passed away, Mr. Siaj, and that was fine. Uh, we we had exchanged some pleasantries online, and although although I didn't know Chris personally, um, I just. He had great vibrations about him. I kind of knew about him for quite a while before he passed. Uh, well, for a while. Um, for some strange reason, uh, me and Dan really never really crossed paths except one time. So I don't want to give this impression that I I had knew Dan at all. I mean, we we had a couple of minor exchanges about one of his videos that he posted, and that was it. Uh, I, I never was, sadly, uh, and I'm not saying this like in any kind of arrogant, arrogant way, uh, there's just so many uh, personalities to follow on YouTube. And for whatever reason, I ran across Dan uh, rather late in my perfume uh, search or game or channel, however you want to say that. And so just for those reasons, uh, I just didn't know much about the Mish family. I knew very little about Dan. I did watch several of his videos, obviously. Uh, he had a really fun, quirky, zany energy. It obviously had the very uh, now infamous sort of hilarious laugh, uh, you know, kind of like a zany type laugh. Just great energy, high octane. Uh, he and his wife, it was just a, a pleasure to watch them uh, vibe so well on camera uh, and, and definitely kick out these awesome reviews, looking at so many great product lines, niche, indie houses, designer, et cetera, et cetera. So, firstly, my 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 sincerest condolences to the Mish family. Uh, I feel your pain. I've lost several very important, special people to me in my life. Um, but again, when you lose someone that that's near and dear to your heart, uh, it's just it's life changing and altering uh, in all kinds of ways. You know, not just the worst kind of way, but in all kinds of ways. Uh, there can be some strange goodness that comes out of it. There can be some horrible, horrible nights and weeks and even years in terms of the emotional trauma and the baggage and moving on. And I, I don't have time to get into all that. This is not a self-help uh, obvious channel, but all that having been said, uh, I just want to reiterate that I, I, for some reason, just was not inclined to do a send-off tribute video. Um, it felt somehow, although I knew about it on day two, thanks to, I think I found out about it on the 6th, either the 5th or the 6th from, um, uh, God, what's his name now? Uh, I know his name. Is it Chad? Not Chad. Um, 
Oh my God, I'm tracking my brain here. Um, anyways, it, it'll come to me. It's not Chad, but at, at any rate, um, I found out from one of the other very famous uh, Frackhead reviewers. If I remember that, I'll type it down later. My mind is a little muddled right now. <laughs> Point is, um, yeah, I just... Like, half of me wanted to do the, the tribute video, and half of me did not. Um, yes, yes, Ashton. Very good, great call, Rich. It was Ash. Uh, he was, in, as far as I know, Ash was the first YouTube reviewer to drop an actual tribute video or, like, red alert video. I could be wrong on that. I checked around. I didn't see anyone else was posted as fast as Ashton did, so a shout-out, Ashton. Uh, I mean, just thank you for keeping the community alert and thank you, Rich, for reminding me. Uh, but it, all that having been said, like half of me wanted to, don't get me wrong. But this little voice in me said, you know, if I do this, I'm probably going to grab like, like 500 views. And I just felt a little bit guilty getting like 500 views based on a very famous fellow reviewer fraghead great channel awesome awesome huge massive content years years of grinding and again i'm i'm not at all impugning any other review i'm not saying that's why they did it far from it a lot of them had very very fantastic to, to whatever extent that they did relationships with uh, dan and and again i did not and and for all of those reasons and maybe some i can't even um elicit or, or, or put my finger on, uh, I just felt it'd be a little bit disingenuous for me to kind of grab, like, say, a thousand views, you know, based on Dan's passing. It's just, again, I'm not saying they had any anything like that in mind, far from it, but the idea occurred to me for my own unique circumstances. And don't get me wrong, I could have easily done it. Probably no one would have thought anything about it except, oh, wow, thank you for giving a shout out. Uh, those are the reasons. I just want to cl clarify that. That's why I did not go forward with that. So we'll just move on now. Again, my sincerest condolences to the Mish family. And by the way, guys, as far as I know, they are still taking uh, donations on the GoFundMe page. You can just Google that in. Real easy to find. Just put Dan Mish, uh, my makers, if you want, GoFundMe. And uh, it, I think, as far as I know, they're still taking donations. So. Definitely. And if you want, I'll post it down the link later. But uh, by now, they've already far surpassed the initial goal. But that's not a reason not to donate. I'm sure there's still going to be many, many costs in the coming weeks and months. You kind of get the picture. It is not an inexpensive uh, ordeal, especially when you've also just lost your I, what I would assume is the primary breadwinner of the family. I mean, there's all that aspect to it. So I'm, I'm not trying to make light at all of the scenario. It's 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 god awful sad uh, and uh what a fantastic personality high octane high energy individual uh dan we're going to miss you your, your fan base is certainly going to miss you more than i just because uh again i i came to you too late you know um i'm definitely a fan for the videos that i've seen uh just a few, like several that's it but a uh, huge channel obviously huge presence in the community touched thousands of lives literally so uh, it's just awesome what, what uh, Dan was able to accomplish in just a, a few short years, really, uh, on YouTube and, and, the, and the greater community. So with, with that now sort of out of the way, let's proceed with my uh, little review of, and I'll keep it short and simple today, guys. I've already run way, way over my planned <laughs> allotment here, but let's get into Perfumes the Marley Byerly. I thought I had the box out. I kind of wanted to show the box, but... Uh, where did I put that guy? I thought I had it right. <laughs> I'm the most disorganized individual. I think me and Sherlock Holmes have a lot in common, I just except that he's like 50 times smarter than me. But <laughs> anyways, I think I grabbed that. Okay. At any rate, this is the, um, the bottle. And I don't know for the life of me where I put the box. Um, my lord anyways whatever this is ridiculous let's just move on that's the bottle now a curious thing about the uh, perfumes of the marley guys if you're not aware uh they do not always put names on their product bottles i don't i don't know why that is 
Uh, I find it strangely irritating and uh, a bit illogical. It's 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 just it's a little too cool for school for my taste. I think I think just for the consumer's case, you should always put the name of your product somewhere on the product that can be visible. You know, I, I honestly wouldn't care if they put it on the inside of the cap, but it's not there either. I wouldn't care if they engraved it somewhere on here. They do not. And I, and I wouldn't even care if they just put it, like, even on the bottom. It's not even on the bottom. So, uh, now, they are sort of color-coded complex. Uh, the, bo the bottle colors are a little bit different. You can't really see this in the camera light, I don't think. But this bottle actually has a lot of uh, deep sort of aquamarine, slightly like a like a dark medium blue Crayola mixed in with gray black. Uh, it's much more obvious in person than it is on camera. And aside from that, the bottle, uh, the bottle cap rather is uh, just silver or chrome. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get into the notes and uh, we'll wrap this guy up here in a jiffy. Uh, I'll start by saying this is really, really good. It's very, very good. And why is it very good? Let's get into that. First, the notes, you get bergamot. You get cardamom. You get cedar. Guyac or guayac wood, both are acceptable pronunciations. Vetiver in the base. And some type of uh, resin, I assume from a tree, obviously. Maybe from a plant, but I'm assuming a tree. Okay. Um... This is an interesting scent, and I think it's going to be one that grows on me quite a bit. Okay, first things first, when you go on hard and heavy, which I tend to do at first with most of my frags, um, it's quite pungent. It's very aromatic, and, and I would lean towards the word pungent for a reason. It almost, almost has a little tiny bit in the opening of a ever so slightly medicinally fecal oud-like um, accord. It's, it's subtle, and it's very clean. Hey, hi, Carlos. Fantastic. Hola, que tal? Como estas? Uh, muy bien. Obviously, it's been about a, about a month, guys, since I've posted. Sorry about that. Just been on hiatus again. Uh, and and I don't know if you're just, yeah if you're just joining Carlos we went through a long preamble where I was talking about Dan Mish, uh, my Mickers passing obviously on, on November fourth, um, very tragic very sad if you want to hit out reach out to Dan's family Amanda and the kids uh, please check out the GoFundMe page you can just type it in on Google put Dan Mish GoFundMe and it's there and I think there's still accepting donations, but uh, definitely tragic loss for the community. Uh, if there's anything we can take away from that, guys, it's just support those in your life that you care about. Love who you're going to love. Love them like it's your last day on earth because it, it just might be. And uh, support uh, YouTube or whoever you want, uh, community members and uh, content creators. If you like them, let them know about it. It could be very meaningful to them. It's not all about money, believe it or not. Uh, in fact, often it's not at all about money. But anyways, back to the review. Uh, and you can rewind later if you want to hear me pre or ramble on about that stuff uh, and why I didn't do a tribute video. But again, back to the uh, perfumes of the Marty Byerly. I really do think this is str a strange sleeper. I myself did not even know about this until a few weeks ago. If I did, it just blipped past my subconscious and I gave it like almost no thought. I have no idea why. And it's funny to hear myself say that it resonated me so strongly with the fact that um, Ashton said pretty much this. No, no excuse me, not Ashton. Um, Sebastian, rather. Sebastian said almost the exact same thing. So check out Seb's channel on, I think it's called Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great or something like that. Um, he said pretty much verbatim what I'm just reiterating, that he slept on it. It just kind of blipped past his radar. He barely knew about it. He went to Paris and smelled it, then took off somewhere. Then he went back and grabbed it the second time. And Sebastian's really kind of, to some extent, fallen in love with this fragrance. 
at this point. Now, again, back to how I was saying that that opening has almost a Laotian oud accord in it, ever so slight fecal uh, note in there, but that that clears out almost, I would say within the first three to four minutes, that's all but gone. And, and then it cleans up <coughs> a lot. And you remember how I was saying it's pungent? Well, then that pungency becomes just more an aromatic pungent, pungency or pungent. Ness, um, very, very woody, uh, almost to the point of smelling like raw cedar in a forest, but it, to me, it gives off the vibe of that cedar being like half, well, like, yeah, like almost like half dry, half wet, uh, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, the guy, the guayac wood gives kind of, along with the resin, gives this very, uh, almost slightly sweet. Um, reminding me a little bit of sandalwood, believe it or not. And then it has that uh, that cardamom, really kind of giving like a little bite to this thing, like almost kind of like a mix of soft black pepper mixed with like just I don't know the tiniest hint of vanilla. But if you like took away like 90% of the vanilla-ness, if you will. I know that sounds bizarre to think about, to think about like that. Uh, and then, of course, the bergamot is there primarily through the opening. It tends to dissipate uh, into the mid, and by the deep dry down, it's the bergamot's really, it's just gone. Let's, let's be real. But, oh, the vetiver is, the, is I think, the, uh, the sleeping rock star of this fragrance. If you're a vetiver lover like I am, guys, this is really, really, really uh, very well done. It's it's done in such a way though where the vetiver kind of sits back and plays this. You know how there's movies like where Ben Kingsley, for example, is like the is he's secretly the best actor in the movie, but he's just playing a supporting role. It's kind of like that. You still may enjoy the lead actor, and but you kind of quietly realize. It's really Kingsley that's allowing this whole thing to gel uh, and come together. I think this is kind of like the Ben Kingsley of this, the vetiver, rather, uh, if that makes any kind of sense. It's just kind of the quiet rock star of this uh, perfume. It's just it's so well done. It's, it's, it's there. It's a little bit subtle, a little bit strong at times, uh, but it's just there the whole way through. Uh, but it's blended so well. You know, one thing about Perfumes de Marley, if, whether you swear by them or hate them or indifferent to them, they know who they are. They know what their scent DNA is. Every fragrance that they produce smells like a Perfumes de Marley. I don't care if it's, what's that new blue one that just came out, Rich? Um, it was all the rage uh, a couple months back. Is it? Am I thinking of Pegasus? No, not Pegasus. The, the, the newer blue one. I think it has like white stripes up and down. Uh, they were talking about it being all the rage for like spring, summer. Y'all know what I'm talking about, guys? The the blue one that just came out recently. Let, let me look it up and see if it's um I can find that real quick. Let's see. I think I'm thinking of, no, not Leighton, Percival, duh, where's my memory? Uh, but, you know, whether it's Herod guys or Godolphin or Habden or Ua John or Meliora or just the plethora of the other ones, I'm not going to uh, just waste time to name. Uh, perfumes the Marley smell like Perfumes the Marley. They have a very sort of... Uh, very specific scent DNA. I don't know if it's the molecules that they buy or are or, or custom develop uh, from the real big heavyweights out of Switzerland and France. Probably that's part of it. And another part of it is just probably the ratios that they use from naturals versus synthetics and really the type of scent profiles they like to go to. But having said all that, I'm just going to spray one more blast. I'm wearing that. That is the scent of the day, by the way. 
uh, really, really good sprayers, guys. If, and these are the probably some of the heaviest caps on earth. If you find a heavier cap on a um, on as big a house, let me know so I can test it out. That's just like next level heavy in the cap. Uh, I love the opening. Um, if you like strong, rich, just oh my god, the cedar and or whatever that is, the, the cryak wood. Uh, it's intoxicating. Wow. It almost has like a fake light Laotian oud type uh, something, something going on there. But again, that does dissipate within about three to five minutes, give or take. Um, now, there's been some issues reported online, guys, before I, we wrap it up, that longevity, not, not so much longevity, but that projection is an issue with this perfume. Uh, I would say yes and no. And let me... <laughs> Let me, let me explain what I mean by that. I I'm almost 90% sure, at least in my own mind, that what people are talking about on projection issues are primarily related to going a, a, a nosmic, you know, where you can no longer smell uh, certain ingredients, certain aromas, certain aroma chemicals, and are to where you are still smelling it, but it feels like you're smelling it at like 40% or 20%. I can assure you, if you go heavy with this frag, A, it will last a good 8 to 12 hours, uh, at least on skin. And people, if they get close to you, they should be able to easily smell it like well into the 6th, 7th hour, like if they can't, either you're in somewhere really cold or they or they have a cold, no pun intended, or they just can't smell good. Um, it's not a powerhouse. That's not what I'm saying. It's not a beast mode fragrance by any means. There's plenty of other nuclear powerhouses out there. But I still do think, however, that um, it's it, it can hold its own. You don't, you don't need to worry too much about projection or longevity issues. Uh, which, by the way, makes it very safe to wear at work. You know, just don't go too heavy on the sprays, or they definitely will smell you regardless. But I think, you know, three, four, five should be plenty and, and, and go to work, and that's fine. I would say if you're going to go partying with this fragrance or somewhere where you're expected to kind of like dance it up or or be out in the elements or in the heat. By the way, I do think this is... Uh, I think it could be worn you round effortlessly to some extent. I think you'd have to be a little bit careful in the summer uh, and somewhat in the spring. I think this is a fragrance that's going to shine a lot more in the fall and the winter uh, because it's so sort of pungently aromatic. Um, it's not quite barnyard, but it's not that far off in the opening. It does mellow out. Uh, and I would say one thing about this fragrance, guys, is that it's, um, besides being very woody and having that really rich, earthy base with the vetiver and um, those different aspects going on, you know, with the resin and, and the cardamom, et cetera, et cetera, and the bergamot. But, okay, on the one hand, it's not as posh a fragrance as like a Prada or a Gucci. Uh, it's not as classic masculine in a sense or in a posh kind of sense as like for example uh some of the well-known italian houses right but on the other hand i think where this can beat them is simply in the quality of ingredients you know you can really tell with perfumes de marley that, that they're really really for the most part using top-notch ingredients and you can just really smell that this doesn't smell synthetic whereas a lot of the italians don't get me wrong they're great they're posh, they're sophisticated, they're masculine, they're classy, but many of them do smell at least semi-synthetic. There's that little something, something that your nose kind of detects where you go, aha, smells great, but I'm getting that little chemical effect. Uh, this doesn't have that. So this really, really smells very, very natural. Am I saying it's 100% natural? Of course not, but it smells more or less close to 100% natural which I think kind of separates this in a way. So, you you know, it's give and take. It's what you want as an end user, what you expect your experience to be. 
Uh, I, for one, am almost positive this will continue growing on me, especially as weather continues to get cooler through the winter. Uh, but I think it's probably a very decent fragrance year-round. Again, be a little bit careful if you're going to rock this thing in, in the uh, dead metal heat of, of uh, summer or uh, sp spring. But again, it depends where you where you live in the world, obviously, because some parts of the world is the reverse. Summer there is cold for them. It's hot here. You, you know, you get the gist. Anyways, guys, that's 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 gonna wrap it up. I did not quite mean to run this long today, but I wanted to get that off my chest. Again, huge condolences uh, to the the Mish, uh, Dan's uh, family, uh, Amanda and the kids, and the, their extended families on both sides. Remember, guys, families are connecting at least two lines, and then also. His entire YouTube family as well. So uh, you know, we we jointly give our uh, our heartfelt uh, condolences, send off, and and Dan, wherever you are, keep on spraying the good stuff because whatever they've got up there, it's probably a lot better than what we've got down here. Not not I mean, we've got great stuff down here. Don't be wrong, but it's probably a significantly better uh, up there. Or, or maybe the olfactory senses are just so much more accurate that there's that whole aspect of enjoyment. I hope that's how it is. Anyways, guys, it's going to do it. Thank you so much. Well, you can welcome me back. I'm, it's glad, I'm glad to be back. It's been a month since I've posted. Uh, shout out again to Rich Mitch and Carlos Colom for joining me here on my live cast. And we'll see you down the road, guys. Uh, I will definitely not be a month this time, Lord willing. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you down the road of life and uh, keep on spraying. And uh, stay sexy, guys. We'll see you down the road. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Peace.